Hello and welcome to Hasu Hour. I'm your host Zerg. The matchup today is Protoss versus Heron. Protoss player spawning in the bottom and the play the Terran player spawning in the top. Both of these players are Grandmaster level, uh, skill level. So we are going to see some pretty skillful play and I'm looking forward to observing their strategies and, and trying to learn from what they do uh, in order to better myself in games in the future. Both players begin with a uh, gateway and barracks respectively and then they get their gas and probably we're going to see fast expand here, but maybe not. Protoss player sends out a probe to scout, get some information on his opponent. The Terran player doesn't, and I'm going to speculate that the reason why he feel, doesn't feel like he needs to scout with an SCV is because he's going to make a Reaper as soon, uh, pretty soon, <laughs> once he gets uh, there, a Reaper, uh, and he's going to scout with that Reaper. So that's going to give him the information that this probe is getting right now. Both players going for that fast expo, and I think the reason for this is that just the nature of Legacy of the Void. And, and maybe it's, it's partly the map here, but mostly it's the nature of Legacy of the Void. It's because you start with so many workers, it's a little difficult to do successful early aggression. Proxies and the like are simply not as viable as they used to be because by the time the attack um, builds up, you know they've already got they've already got stuff established. I guess the other thing too is um, the Protoss. They've got this early mothership course, so that's very good at fending off uh, cheesy rushes. In comes the Reaper, skipping past the Protoss main base, and he wants to target the the natural. But this is actually very nice. The uh, the Protoss player has absolutely no workers at that natural. So he only has to worry about defending his main base. So that's pretty intelligent there. Um, pretty good planning to recognize that the Reaper Wrath is coming and to make sure that there was nothing for it to hit. Really, uh, really smart play. The Reaper can do a lot of damage if you're not careful against it. With this uh, Pylon Mothership Core defense, it's not going to be able to do too much. Uh, and, and you'll note the Pylons here spread to cover every section of the base. A great efficiency uh, of setup. An early Twilight Council for the Protoss player, and maybe we'll see some DT, or maybe you just need Blink. Blink, uh, that's pretty strong too. Probably going to see some cool Blink Micro. And the Adept here scouting the Terran ramp. The Shade is invulnerable, so as long as you cancel it, you can get some information as to what's going on. He can't see too much though. The Terran player here has amassed a pretty nice marine army and he opted for a little bit of a slower starport build instead of uh, going for an early drop which can be an effective strategy but he's chosen more of a mass play. Uh, perhaps he's thinking about an early main tank push. And uh, it looks like he's swapping out uh, 
swapping out the starport in the factory. Probably to do a fast uh, medevac pump here. The Marines on a move on the move a bit, just scouting around, making sure there's nothing here. They could be watching that third base timing. Intelligence and counterintelligence are, are extremely important in StarCraft. Scouting and scout denying. And uh, you, you, want, you want to be constantly uh, trying to get information. It is a game of incomplete information. So you want to determine your opponent's plans and you also want to to fake them out a bit. You don't want to telegraph what you're doing. You want them to think you're doing something when in reality you're doing something else. The current army here, uh, dangerously close to the Protoss base, and the Marine Force is scouted by this observer. So the Toss is going to be able to get its Mothership Corps in position and a simple frontal assault will not work here. I don't know if that's what Matt was planning, but he, he scans the odds and takes it out, and that is a really nice play. Those guys are in a hurry to get somewhere. Looks like they're going for the rocks. So, uh, might as well take those out. He can threaten to drop into the main, too, so the Protoss player has to sort of Watch both those eventualities. Rocks are not going to take that long to get defeated. And the Protoss player now seeing the Marines outside his base. Gets his army in position. Nice mix. Uh, Blinks in within range of the Marines. Takes out one of the medevacs. And the Marines are running for their lives. Tactical retreat here by Mech Warfer. Uh, he tries to heal all these stim Marines who've been hopped up on too much speed. And it seems like he's going for a double unit formation here, possibly uh, as some sort of I'm not sure why he goes on to split up, but perhaps so that he can hit in multiple spots at once. He can spread into engage at the front and then do a drop and go in through the back door here. So this is kind of cool, double control group, and one army here is sort of fencing. Disruptor attack now for the Protoss player. So uh Mechwarper is going to have to be very careful uh, that he doesn't get eaten up by those purification novas. And this is uh, the cost forced to defend on two fronts. <laughs> A very novel tactic. The downside being, of course, that uh, excellent, excellent spread there, dodging the purification nova. The downside being that he is going to be constructing a stronger army with each of his individual constituent strike forces. So the Protoss force is going to be able to defeat him in, in sort of single combat. All in all, not really clear who won that confrontation. Both players very even in supply. The Terrans, third base now online. Suddenly there was some damage done by the, the attack, and that is a pretty cool strategy. I'm just going to turn the sound down uh, just a little bit here. And we're back. Sure pause. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Really nice purification over here, taking out the mine. And, uh, oh my god! Massive infantry losses from the Purification Nova. That is not going to be good for business. That's not going to be good for anybody. The last little mine now eliminated. And the Protoss player is on the move, looking to counterattack. He, he does have a bit of a supply edge now uh, with that 
purification nova destroying a decent chunk of that fighting force. But the Terran player is is not going to be counting the submission. He's uh, maintaining an aggressive posture and perhaps looking to strike this fourth fourth base here as well as readying some defenses in case he has to retreat to his third. The Stalkers attack the, the Terran army. And the Terrans are on the retreat. Purification Nova taking out two Widow Mines. But the Toss uh, pausing for a moment to regroup and then continuing on with his assault. Hitting this space just in case. And, uh, although it's sort of uh, illogical to expand here, close to your uh, opponent and his army. A few tanks would be really nice in this composition. But uh, it appears to be strictly a bio ball. And there is a, a drop force here. Preemptively hitting these two bases just in case. And almost certainly going to march on. And the Protoss player uh, trying to take the, the Terran the Terran main here, basically. I mean, it's the second natural, but inches from the main. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Terran draft force here not really doing too much. Protoss. Firing the purification nova, taking out a mine, but carrying careful to spread his infantry, uh, really managing to dodge these purification novas very well. Excellent control there, running uh, just the right time, and not letting those purification novas uh, throw any hit. It is tremendously difficult to micro your entire army and the purification nova simultaneously. Fourth base, Planetary Fortress, online here, holding off the added attack. It is a good idea when you're you're uh, making your your outward expose to get this Planetary Fortress, just to hold off any light harass forces that might otherwise wipe out your Eto, and uh, as well it can save you having to multitask when you're focusing on important battles. Heavy, heavy uh, damage from this, this minefield here, I mean... <laughs> uh, so there's some jokes we made about three engine landmines. A massive landmine. Amount. And the Terran just absolutely crushing this attack with his Marine Marauder army. The Protoss player forced to retreat, but a Disruptor manages to make a massive, massive kill with that Purification Nova. The Marauders wanting to avenge their fallen comrades. Focus fire on one Disruptor, and it goes down, but a heavy losses. Five or six Widow Mines there uh, destroyed while they were burrowing. And the Terran player is in retreat. Massive supply advantage for the Protoss. Let's take a look at income. Pretty even harvester advantage for red. And uh, it looks like he's going to capitalize on his gains by attacking this sparsely defended fourth base. First, he's uh, grouping up. Nice formation here. And this this uh, this base is going down very very quickly. The disruptor is excellent with the purification nova at taking out the repairing SUVs and the planetary forces has been destroyed. But the Terran player has counterattacked and destroyed the Protoss's fourth base. So the income there is going to be equalized, as is the harvester count. But the the Terran third goes down, and he is forced to retreat into his main, which may just fall quickly. UTs now uh, attempting to 
stealthy approaching Terran army, but they are unsuccessful. And the Kultos does not want to push into the Terran main. But he is going to be able to grab this base here. And the, uh, the Terran, not willing to push into the Protoss main, perhaps wisely with this well-placed disruptor, ready to just slaughter uh, at the scope. Mad SCG army on the run. Joining its uh, infantry friends there. Well, micro purification Novas, but the Protoss army has been routed and uh, only a few stalkers remain. What a phenomenally close game. Yes, the Protoss player was ahead, but both players now virtually no income in a essentially a base trade situation. He is going to have to fly his command center to his third base. The cost now does have a bit of an expo here as well. Uh, but it's going to be a little easier for the Zerg to get his eco back online. And uh, a couple stray Widow Mines still doing damage. 11 and 2 kills. The 11 has been promoted to Sergeant. Which I guess is a big deal for a Widow Mine. Usually inanimate objects don't, don't make it past Corporal. And out of now uh, in a quixotic quest to kill the orbital command. One on one combat between an adept and a marauder. This is rarely seen. But it looks like the adept may actually be getting the best of it. The Saren trying to push into the Protoss main. And uh, kind of nice actually using the wedge there against the disruptor so that he'll have more room to maneuver away from the Nova. And the Terran gaining access to the Protoss main. So losing a Marauder to the Purification Nova. Two more going down. And the Terran, amazing, amazing grab there. Dodging the Nova and uh, managing to fight very successfully. One more Disruptor goes down. And the last one, and all the Disruptors have been killed. But the uh, Protoss player is still significantly high ahead of supply. A very nice shot from the Widow Mine. He was not expecting that. And where are the odds? Uh, the Protoss uh, third base coming online here. And there is a lot more life in it than at this well mine Terran third. So eco-wise, you really have to consider that Toss has the long-term advantage, especially now as he's fully saturation mined. Uh, he's even got more nexuses if he wants to. Nexi? If he wants to uh, pump probes. Although he seems to be focusing his meager income on military. And that's a wise decision at this point. And we've got engagement here. The Marauders... Uh, really limiting the maneuverability of the Protoss army, but the superior army side here may just be the deciding factor, even if the, uh, the Ada soccer combination isn't particularly effective on a dollar for dollar basis. It's just so many more units. The Terran retreating to the safety of his widow mine, but, and they are uh, scouted by the OBS, but still managed to get a kill there of an adept. <laughs> a little chat from the players. And uh, he doesn't know, he won't say. He does, yes, in fact, he does have an expo here. I really enjoy... <laughs> and a lie from MC... Henning! <laughs> wow. Wow. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. That is just hilarious. He was saying that, uh, that he, like a noob, you had like a massive supply of, of mineral and gas. The SCDs joining in the, the predominantly marauder force. 
But this game is over, and the Protoss has won. Uh, the only thing left is, is for the inevitable GG. <laughs> As the, the Terran army is in ruin, and the Protoss forces are to destroy it. But what a great uh, attacking game from both players. And you just gotta love seeing these space trade situations with uh, and constant attack and uh, really phenomenal players from both of these guys. A lot of a lot of really neat tactics and very aggressive attacking play. Absolutely a great game.